Hi there, everyone. Welcome to The Daily Gardener. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling. It's June 25th. Did you know that the most popular giant hosta is Empress Wu? At maturity, the plant is five feet tall with an eight-foot spread. Pictures don't really do the Empress Wu hosta justice. Because of its size and fast rate of growth, Empress Wu demands a soil that is consistently moist, but not soggy. Empress Wu was bred by Brian and Virginia Skaggs out of Lowell, Indiana. They named their hosta after the only woman in the history of China to serve as emperor. Here's today's brevities. It was on this day in 1799 that the Scottish botanist David Douglas was born. Douglas was responsible for the identification of over 200 new plant species in North America, including the famous Douglas fir. Douglas never received a formal education, and he was primarily a plant collector rather than a published scientist. Despite his lack of formal training, Douglas sent more plants to Europe than any other botanist of his time. During his expeditions, Douglas was often accompanied by his little Scottish terrier named Billy. Douglas's career ended tragically in 1834 when he was killed while exploring in Hawaii. And today is the anniversary of the death of the landscape gardener and botanist William Robert Guilfoyle, who died on this day in 1912. Guilfoyle was the architect of the Royal Botanic Gardens in Melbourne. It took Guilfoyle over 35 years to transform the Botanic Gardens into what now is widely accepted as one of the world's greatest botanical landscapes. When the author of Sherlock Holmes, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, saw the garden, he said it was absolutely the most beautiful place he had ever seen. And it's the anniversary of the death of Nathaniel Lord Britton, an American botanist and taxonomist who died on this day in 1934. Britton married the famous bryologist Elizabeth Gertrude Knight. Together, they used Kew Gardens in London as their inspiration for the New York Botanical Garden. Britton and the botanist Joseph Rose named the genus Carnegie in 1908 as a tribute to Carnegie's philanthropy. In an obituary of Britain, the botanist Henry Rusby shared this charming anecdote. Attracted one day by the beauty of some drawings that lay before him, I inquired as to their source, and when told that he himself was the artist, I asked in astonishment, Can you draw like that? Of course, he said. What do you suppose I did all that hard work in the drawing class for? And it was on this day in 1903 that the author George Orwell was born. Over the past few decades, Orwell's diaries have been made public. Across from his entry for October 3, 1946, there is a map for a fruit and vegetable garden. Orwell had hoped to set up a small farm on his property that he called Barn Hill on the island of Jura. In reality, Orwell's health was not good when he was on the island. Before he arrived, he'd actually received a diagnosis of tuberculosis. Working in the vegetable garden was deemed good for him because at that time, being in fresh air was considered part of the treatment for tuberculosis. The last entry in his diary is from December of 1949. It reads, Snowdrops all over the place, a few tulips showing, some wallflowers still trying to flower. In unearthed words, here are some quotes 
from George Orwell. Outside my work, the thing I care most about is gardening, especially vegetable gardening. The plant is blind, but it knows enough to keep pushing upwards toward the light, and it will continue to do this in the face of endless discouragements. So often like this, in lonely places in the forest, he would come upon something, bird, flower, tree, beautiful beyond all words if there had been a soul with whom to share it. Beauty is meaningless until it is shared. Today's book recommendation is Gardener's Latin by Bill Neal. This text remains one of the best resources for helping you to understand Latin plant names and to help you become a better gardener with that knowledge. Neil includes little-known horticultural facts, fables, and wisdom from other gardeners, from Virgil to Vita Sackville West. For today's garden chore, order yourself some two-inch floral pins. I use these all the time in the garden, especially when I'm creating with succulents. Recently, I was sharing images of some head planters I'd put together and even a large succulent wreath. Floral pins help make those creations possible and help train the plants where you want them to grow. I've included a link in today's show notes to the floral pins I like to order on Amazon. Finally, here's something sweet to revive the little botanic spark in your heart. It was on this day in 1929 that the American writer and illustrator Eric Carle was born. Carle gave a commencement address at Bates College in 2007, and he concluded with these words, Love your partner and tend your garden simplify, slow down, be kind. And it was Eric Carl who said, whatever our eyes touch should be beautiful. Carl has an extensive knowledge and love of nature. His early books include Nature Thoughts, Flower Thoughts, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, and The Tiny Seed, which documents the growth of flowers from seeds. And here's a quote from Carl's most memorable work. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That night... He had a stomach ache. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced weekdays in lovely Maple Grove, Minnesota. You can find complete show notes over at thedailygardener.org. And be sure to share the show with your garden friends. You can find The Daily Gardener on all your favorite social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest, and of course, Facebook. While you're over at Facebook, don't forget to join The Daily Gardener community. Just search for these three words, Daily Gardener Community. The group will pop right up and then request to join. Finally, I want to thank my team at Podfly Productions, where my fabulous editor is Eric Begay. Have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow.